we are diving in super deep right now, talking about how to, how to go from all work and no play to reigniting the fun and adventure in your life. Who's excited? Raise your hand if you're excited. Say yes if you're excited. Yes. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun. Before we dive into the conversation, an amazing next 30, 40 minutes or so, I'm going to be sharing about how we're able to do this podcast and this episode. It's through our sponsor, aka Burn It Up Coaching, the company behind becoming your greatest possible self. And I love helping people to discover their purpose, really ignite their presence, and start, launch, and grow their platform, their online platform to help them get their message out to the world. I love doing that. And specifically, I love working with people in a really short amount of time, if that's what you're looking for. If you're looking for the breakthrough, if you're hungry, if you're a massive action taker, and you know that there's more there's more potential within you. There's more greatness within you. Just like Melissa was talking about in the last interview, I want to ignite that potential that's already within you. You've already got the, the fire going. I don't want to work with people whose fire have gone out. Sorry, that's just not the type of people who I want to work with. I don't want to have to motivate someone. I want to work with someone who's on freaking fire and take them to the next level to remove the blocks and keep them moving forward. So that's what the 21 day challenge is for is to really reignite that passion, that self belief, redirect it, focus, get clear on the long term goals, break it down into bite sized steps so you can increase your momentum, increase the results, and truly create the life of your dreams. Not saying that's gonna happen in 21 days, but in 21 days, you're gonna have some huge, huge progress. I'm gonna hold you accountable for 21 days. We're gonna dial in your daily nighttime routines, I'm gonna dial in your habits with you and you are going to make some massive progress. If you want to find out more about the 21 day challenge, send me a message, chris at beergps.com or find me on Facebook and message me there and let me know you're interested in the 21 day challenge. I love having people ask me about it and just sharing about what is really possible and diving into that in 21 days. So message me if you're interested. The next thing I wanted to share about is the iTunes review of the week. And I love it because I just started putting it on the screen so you all can see it too if you're watching the video. And the iTunes review of the week this week is by human flame it gets you going that's what we do here thanks chris for your energy and positivity that you bring love what you are bringing to the table thanks so much human flame if you love this show if you want to give us feedback if you want to help us grow if we can make it even better and deliver even more of what you want uh, go to beergps.com forward slash itunes and on itunes give us a review subscribe leave a rating all that good stuff and we'll continue growing together for a very very long time to come because I'm not here just for the now. I'm here for the long term. So if you're someone who's in it for the long term, you want to build the relationship, this is a really great way to get noticed. So thanks in advance for doing that. And go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes store to give us that review. Thanks so much in advance. Now the next hour, we're going to be talking about going from all work and no play to reigniting the fun and adventure in your life. And specifically, I want to dive into the theme today, which is remembering how to have fun. So why did I choose this theme? Because not so long ago, I was a person who had cast out fun out of my life. I said, I don't need fun. I'm better than this fun crap. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to build an empire. I'm going to be proud of who I am. I don't need to watch TV. I don't need to do anything that's enjoyable. Nah, I'm just going to grind my face off into the ground and build an empire and make lots of money and be happy when I finally reach the mountaintop. Yeah, that didn't go so well. <laughs> I was pretty miserable. I isolated myself. I had to numb my feelings of like, I'm so frustrated. So feeling like I can't communicate this with anyone. I can't, can't have fun, can't express myself, couldn't emotionalize things. And it was terrible. It was a really, really difficult period of time in my life. Stopped playing video games, stopped going places, like just said, I got to work my butt off and I'm not going to hang out with my family or loved ones or do anything that I really enjoy. And it was really difficult. And I broke through that. What I did is I, I started looking for my block because I wasn't getting 
much results in anywhere in my life at that time. And it was like, man, I'm, I'm just like seriously stuck here. What I didn't have a beautiful woman by my side. My business wasn't growing how I wanted it to. I felt like disconnected and unhappy, like really unhappy, you know? And so I started looking around, looking to the different patterns and things that were going on in my life. Like where, where are things stuck? Where are things broken? Why am I blocked? What's my freaking self-sabotage here? Chris, let's find this. Let's find this, the root cause. And so I finally found that I was just not really enjoying life. It wasn't present. I wasn't connected to people. It was very transactional, very feeling fear and, and, and scarcity and lack. Like there wasn't enough time. There wasn't enough Chris Burns to go around. Sorry, I can't talk to you. And I'm too busy building, too busy working, too busy getting to my dreams and goals. And I get that you're, you want to hang out, you want to communicate, you want to be in my life, but I just don't have time for you. And that's who I, that's who I was to everyone. And so I was like, what is causing this? Why, why, why do I feel a scarcity? Why do I feel like I'm not enough? And so I finally started going back and retracing those experiences, uncovering, digging deep into my childhood memories and the meaning that I had created around certain events and just being able to redecide. Not that I had to prove myself, prove that I was worthy, prove that I was tough enough, prove that I was good enough for my my family, specifically my dad. I was like really out to to be good enough and make him proud and finally said like I don't need to do that stuff. I'm going to be me. And I'm going to love me. And I'm going to fill my own cup first. So I started meditating. I started reading. I started working on myself really to to fill up my own cup. Not, not, I didn't personally grow myself in the beginning. I personally grew myself because I felt like I was inadequate. I felt like I didn't know enough. I felt like I needed to go to all these seminars and invest in myself to finally be enough. And I re-decided that that's not who I wanted to be. And I decided that I would have fun. I would have more fun. I would I would smile more. I would skip and dance more. I started doing Zumba dancing, started doing hip hop dancing, started doing yoga to get more flow in my life because I felt really rigid and stiff and unmovable. I was I was like really paralyzed with fear and being intimidated by life. I was afraid of life. I'd gone through electrical engineering school. I got my degree and I felt like I didn't connect with anybody there. So I felt isolated. I felt like I sucked at connecting with people, all these things. And I was like, I want to challenge all these beliefs. So I started challenging them and building relationships, networking, going and doing things that intimidated me and scared me, trying new things, trying vegetables. I hated vegetables for a lot of my life. <laughs> I was like, screw vegetables. I'm going to eat unhealthy, processed hot dogs, macaroni and cheese and hamburgers and pizza for the rest of my life that didn't work out so well. So I really started to make some new decisions of being open, of of challenging myself to grow, to be happier, to be more fulfilled, to be more energized. And through that, I had to learn how to start laughing at myself. Um, I had a, an, a marathon episode a while back where I spent like an entire hour just like really nurturing the the inner child of, of myself and also laughing at myself, learning to laugh at myself. I spent a couple minutes just like laughing. My stomach and abs were hurting so bad because I was laughing so hard. And it's just amazing, you know, just like to be able to do that on camera. I was so afraid. It felt so weird, felt so awkward. I was like, I don't really care about what people think. I'm just going to laugh and be weird. Because it's about me at the end of the day. If I'm not able to be me, how can I be with others? And not it's about me at the end of the day. It's about everyone. And if if I'm not taking care of me, if I'm not allowing me to just be me and screw what other people think, they can think what they want. Because I know at the end of the day, I'm worth it. I'm worthy. I'm enough. I love myself. I like myself. I appreciate myself. If that's not there, then what does it matter if anyone else likes me or not? So me first and love myself first and and really contribute to myself and my happiness, my well-being, take action, take inspired action, build the business, all that good stuff, have fun, make sure I'm balanced, and then make sure that I'm also filling up the cups of those around me with my overflow, with my, my overfill. So I really want to share that because remembering how to have fun was such a big breakthrough for me because I had become so purpose-driven and determined and ambitious. I was super ambitious. That's the masculine energy. There's ambition, which is the masculine energy and inspiration, which is, which is the feminine energy. I became super ambitious when I discovered about personal development and entrepreneurship and the inspiration 
it fueled me in the beginning, but after a while, like I, I wasn't cultivating the feminine, the inspiration, the feeling, the fun, the flow, the dancing, the adventure. I wasn't feel, fueling that. I was just drive, drive, drive. And it really burned me out. It was, it was pretty miserable. So I wanted to share that because I learned that I had to start incorporating fun. I had to give myself the gift of fun, of play, of adventure, whatever that is for, for whatever that was for me. For you, it could be something completely different. It could be playing an instrument. It could be going to musical theater. It could be going to theaters. It could be watching movies. It could be learning a new skill, speaking a different language, traveling, adventure. That's something else I wanted to talk about in this interview, this hour, is the power of adventure. Like I am so grateful about who I am because of the adventure that I have been willing to open myself up to. I still have room to grow. I still have spontaneity and and you know that instant like ooh, I feel something. I feel inspired and called to go do this and then do it. You know, me and my girlfriend when we were first uh, dating, we went to a restaurant and it wasn't a restaurant where you can dance, quote unquote, but it had great Latin music. And so during our dinner, I just said, Hey, let's, let's get up and go dance. And we went out to the, to the sidewalk right by the, the restaurant and danced in, at nighttime and just had fun. And we didn't care what people thought about us or anything like that. We were just in our own world, our own adventure, our own magic and creating that and that's really what's available those those magical moments those miraculous moments when you truly reignite that fun and that adventure within yourself like life transforms a whole another world opens up to you so i want to dive into this this conversation of from all work and no play to reigniting the fun and adventure in your life because here's here's the thing if you don't take action on this, if you don't do anything about this, the foreseeable future looks really boring. It looks like you're burning out, probably um, don't have the the zest and aliveness in life. You might be achieving results in your business. You might be crushing it like that. And you just, you don't feel like a whole complete person because fun and play are an integral part of being a human being super important. Like aliveness comes from fun. So whether that's playing hopscotch, going rollerblading, riding your bike, jumping out of planes, skydiving, driving a really fast car, rolling around in the mud, whatever it is for you, designing things, whatever it is for you, like you really get to discover what it is that inspires you and motivates you and keeps you moving forward in a holistic way. I I always look for what what's going to bring me new inspiration from different directions and different places that I I couldn't even imagine before. How can I be inspired? I want to be inspired by dance. So I did Zumba and hip hop and became inspired through different body movements and feeling super uncomfortable at first, but I was willing to do it. I was willing to subject myself to that so to speak to get out of my comfort zone so I can be more adaptable, so I can be more, you know, laugh at myself. I I wouldn't take myself so seriously. So that was super important for me. But the probable future, that foreseeable future, if you don't take action on this, is you're going to live a half full life. You're going to, you're going to end up spending the next three, five, 10, however many years until you make a decision that you're worth it and you're worth it to have these these moments, right? To, to really value the moment versus the external thing. Cause if you're driven, if you're acquiring, if you're achieving, if you're getting the women, getting the cars, getting the houses, getting the money, whatever, that's all great. I keep doing what you want to do. And from my experience, it hasn't been fulfilling that drive, that ambition in terms of filling up my soul, the achievement, the external thing could never really fill me up. So I want to invite you in this conversation to learn how to generate your aliveness, your fun, your peace, your centeredness, your groundedness, all of it, so that you can really be the master and the creator of your reality. And that's what we're going to be diving into. So that's a foreseeable future. You're not, you're not full. You might not be miserable. You might not be hating life. But you'll feel like something's off. You'll feel like something's not quite right. At the end of every day, you'll feel like, is this it? Is this like, did I, did I really like, is this what I was here to do? Put, put here on this planet to do? Did I really experience life? Did I really live? Did I really love? Did I really matter? And that question will probably be a no. And I want to avoid you having that experience, that feeling, those emotions, that sensation, that perspective of life, because it's too short. Life is too short to, 
go through with that kind of a mindset. Now, when you get this right, when you really dive into the fun and the adventure and you bring the play back to your life, you'll feel like life just became so much more colorful. And I see Sharon Johnson out there. What's up, superstar? Hope you're having the best day ever. You'll see, you'll feel like life became so much more colorful, alive, vibrant, interesting. Your curiosity will come back into play. That was another thing that left me when I said, I'm just going to work my ass off and acquire things and achieve things and get to the top of the ladder, climb the mountain. I just felt like my curiosity left me. My wonder, my curiosity and wonder and, and, and the zest, the interest, the, my interest in life disappeared. It became more of a routine thing. A, I felt like a machine. I felt like a mechanical machine just on autopilot. And when you bring this, this fun and this adventure and the playfulness back, you will feel alive. You will feel like you've been rebirthed every morning. There's a whole new experience and a sensation of what is possible today. Who can I be today? How can I show up today? What's the magic that I can cultivate and create today? If it's something as simple as a kiss on the lips of your lover and experiencing the tingling and the chemistry and the connection. Or maybe it's the the moment of a conversation with a client knowing that you are changing their life. The wonder of that, the, the, the how everything lined up, the possibility of their whole world being changed because of you, because of your presence. Without you, who would they have been? With you, who are they now and who are they becoming? That is transformation. That is wonder. That is possibility. That is magic and miracles. And when you really bring back this aspect of being creative in how you can play and have fun and be in wonder and possibilities, that's when you just feel connected, connected to possibility, connected to not just the same old, same old, but like what's possible today? What new thing could I do today? Do I want to like stretch my body this morning? It's it's so funny. Like whenever I wake up, I'm just listening to what my body needs. Sometimes I'll get up and I'll just like lay on the floor and stretch my legs and stretch my body and like do something different. Some days I'll read. Some days I'll jump on the computer and start creating or writing or typing. Whatever it is like that I feel called to, I trust myself to do that, to be spontaneous, to be fun and to go on those adventures. Now, there's something that's to be said about planned adventures, vacations, that sort of thing. And when you get this right, you'll feel like even when you plan something a week or months or even months and months and year in advance, you can still have that sense of adventure and playfulness being excited about all the possibilities, being in anticipation. What's it going to be like? What's it going to be like when you go on that vacation? What's it going to be like when you're adventuring, when you're experiencing the world in whole new ways? That wonder, that possibility, that's what I really love to experience in my own life and share with other people as well. So when you get that this right, you'll be tapped into those extra dimensions, extra layers of life that may have previously been inaccessible to you because you didn't know, because you were just going through the motions, okay? So my purpose in this next couple minutes or so will really be to, to educate you on the awareness of where you're at now and what's going on. And then where do you want to go? What's, what's important to you? What do you want to create? What do you want to cultivate? So the awareness. Let's talk about your level of fun. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how much fun would you say you have on an average day? How much, how much fun do you bring to your days? How much fun? How much joy? How much aliveness? Let's talk about those things. On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you? Awareness is super critical. Are you at a, a 3? You kind of just get through the day. Are you at a 5? Some days are like super funny and fun. Some days are meh. And you just want the day to be over and to be the next day already. Maybe you're at an eight. 
and you're having so much fun and you're playing in your day and you're having joy and you're expanding. What is it for you? What, where are you at on this fun scale? I want you to type it in the comments wherever you're at. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just important to be aware. How much fun are you having? How much joy are you bringing to life? So be aware of that fun factor. And the second one is adventure. How much adventure do you have in your life? Make sure you save that number for your fun, for wherever you're at. And the second one is going to be the adventure. How much adventure are you having in your life? Petya says, I think like seven. I love it. Great job, Petya. How much adventure are you having in your life? On a scale of one to 10, how much adventure? Two being like, man, I just like, I go through the motions. I, I don't do very many vacations. I don't do very much different things. I don't really challenge myself, get uncomfortable, get outside of my comfort zone. Where are you at in terms of a adventure? Two, that's where two would be. Let's say five. Maybe five is like every once in a while you'll go a different route when you're driving home. Every once in a while you'll try a new restaurant. Maybe when you're you're going out somewhere, you just let your intuition guide you to the to the place that you're supposed to be. You walk around, you go explore, you just keep following your your footsteps sometimes. Not very often, not all the time, but you know, every once in a while. That's probably about a five. What about an eight? Let's talk about an eight in adventure. Maybe you're like constantly creating adventure every day practically feels like an experience a new experience a new quest a new exciting fulfilling possible smorgasbord poss possibility smorgasbord of what could happen and where you could go and things you could do and the people that you could talk to the conversations that's that's like getting into an eight and you you actually act on these things too and you invite people with you maybe you go on on your own maybe you do your adventuring on your own and you do a lot of that and you just wander around kind of and you just allow your feet to take you where they're going to go or maybe you bring people with you and you have an experience where feel yourself coming alive. You feel yourself going into new places and new territories kind of kind of un, unhindered, you know? We're we're talking about a level 8 here. And to get it to level 10 might be something like you're doing this all the time. You, it's it's built into you. It's a habit now. It's a habit to get out of your comfort zone. It's a habit to go try new restaurants, new types of foods and, you know, eat fish eyeballs and I don't know, you know, whatever that is for you. What is your definition of adventure? Maybe you've already done things. Maybe you go on hikes. Maybe you go out to the, the wilderness and nature and maybe you go shopping. Maybe you go adventuring in different places often. You know, every weekend you create some kind of little adventure for yourself. But it's really important that you become aware first to understand how you want to grow. So we talked about fun and adventure. Those are really the two areas that I want to focus on in this. And I see Petya said seven for fun, adventure maybe six. I want more travels and I get to manifest and plan more travels. Fun, seven or eight, but adventure less, four or five. Can depend on each day. Blah, fish eyeballs. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely, Petya. I don't think I would eat them either. I'm I'm not at a level 10 on adventure for that one. That's for sure. <laughs> so what is your, your number? Okay. Now I want you to think, what could you do to take that number up another one or two notches within the next week? We'll start with fun. What's something that you could do that would be fun for you that you can do with this week. Okay. And we'll, we'll do fun and adventure. I'll talk about both back and forth since Sharon said, I am loving to have more adventure. So we'll, we'll do both fun and adventure. What could you do to raise that number up? Let's say two or three points two, one, two, three points, you know, just a couple points. What could you introduce into your life for fun? Maybe it's, maybe you want to dance a little bit more. You want to, you want to sing a little bit more, maybe smile a little bit more. Maybe say, I hope you're having the best day ever to a couple more people. Maybe that's going to bring you some fun. Maybe for the adventure, you want to go somewhere. You want to say, hey, kids, you want to go somewhere? Family, you want to go somewhere? Hubby, do you want to go somewhere, babe? Do you want to you go do something? And they're like, what? And say, I don't know. We're going to go somewhere. We're just going to let our intuition guide us. Bring your sneakers. If you want to go to the wilderness, you know, I'm, I'm feeling. You can, you can, you can just like give a general direction. I'm feeling wilderness. I'm feeling a hike. I'm feeling 
play, more play, more fun. I'm feeling some exercise. I'm feeling some water. I'm feeling some travel this weekend. Let's travel. Let's travel somewhere. Let's just go somewhere we haven't been before. It could be 10 minutes away. It could be 30 minutes away. It could be five hours away. It could be a flight across the world, whatever, <laughs> whatever is your budget and your time schedule allows. And shout out to all the digital nomads who can do what they want when they want. <laughs> For people who have families, uh, I'm sure I'll be there too one day. And even when I do have a bigger family, I have a family now. And when I have a bigger family with kids, I'm sure I will I will still incorporate adventure and travel because we want our kids. And I'm speaking for the woman of my dreams. She can correct me later if she'd like. I, I'm asserting that we will have lots of adventures and want our kids to grow up traveling, grow up experiencing the world, seeing so many different cultures and, and ethnicities and perspectives, right? So adventure. Adventure could be um, setting more games, creating more games, fun and adventure. How do you create a game where you go out into the world and explore and discover things? Maybe you say, I'm, I'm going to go discover some art today. Maybe that's the objective. You say, I want to go into the world and see some art and experience some art. Before you leave the house, before, like, create criteria, create boundaries, create rules, so to speak, from the game for the game. Not because you want to restrict yourself. Because you want to give yourself guidelines, you want to give yourself some, you know, the bumpers in in uh, what you call it, uh, bowling, the bumpers on the side. You want to give yourself some some bumpers just to make sure you stay in the lane. So maybe that's what you do. You create some some fun objectives. I want to see some art today. I want to see. I want to. I want to experience humanity today. Maybe that's the adventure that you want to go on. You set a goal for that today or this weekend. And I want you to type in the comments if there's something that you really want to do that will take your fun and your adventure to the next level. I want you to type that in the comments. What do you want to create? Pet this is introduce Chris Burns in our lives for more fun. That's right. Absolutely. Heck yes to adventure with kids. Absolutely. Sharon, so, so much fun with my little girl. She loves fun. Sharon says love nature and the beach. Petty says go to Bali for two months. All right. Are you taking me with you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. We got some, we got some adventures coming peeps. So wow. I was talking about like, Hey, go play a game in your city today. And she's like, Bali. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> you know, you know, when someone's serious, when they're like Bali, <laughs> they just drop it. Bali. <laughs> Two months, Bali. So you get to create your adventure. And you may be doing Bali this week. That might be in your in your cards and in your plans. And if so, take me with you. And if there's something that you want to do that's more accessible, Bali's great. And there could be something that's that's just as much adventure, just as much fun. You just get to be creative about it. You get to be excited and eager. What what is something that you haven't done? You know, for me, I, I wrote a couple things out, not a couple, 100, 101 things out that I wanted to be, do, and have this year. And on that list, some of the activities that I wanted to do with the woman of my dreams are uh, throwing clay, pottery, dancing more, um, singing, developing our, our like writing a, a song together with the woman of my dreams and making music together, you know, whatever that, that might look like. But those are all examples of adventure. Um, I said, do a yoga together. I also said, do, um, naked yoga by candlelight together. That's, that's kind of an adventure. <laughs> that's pretty adventurous, pretty wild for our, for our standards. You know, we, we, we could probably take it to the next level too. And <laughs> that's a, that's a great next step. So Whatever it is for you, maybe it's, you know, go to a mud bath, maybe it is, go get a massage, maybe that's for you, that's fun and adventure. Maybe um, go to a new city, and in the new city, see what inspires you and calls to you. Go to a neighboring city, go to a different part of town that you haven't been to. Like, I know I'm, we're in Las Vegas, we're in uh, Summerlin area, so there's a lot of places I haven't been, maybe my my girlfriend has and i know that specifically more towards the strip we haven't been over there very much or henderson we've been to lake mead beyond henderson so there's a lot of surrounding areas that have room to expand into and opportunities for fun and adventure but i'm just creating a ton of different ideas for you right now and sharon said she's going with petia to bali hope you all have fun 
thanks for not inviting me. <laughs> she said, I would love to go on a retreat. Oh my gosh. Petty, I think I think you just found your first uh, your first retreat client. <laughs> or Becca. Becca's gonna be talking about retreats today too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's there's gonna be a lot of different things that you can do. But I want you to type in in all seriousness. This is this is you know put your money where your mouth is, put your butt on the line kind of a thing. What's the adventure that you want to go on this week? And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up my schedule because it's Wednesday. And I usually, we usually have our day off on Saturday. We usually do nature on Saturday. I know we talked about the woman in my dreams and I we talked about going rollerblading. So that's something that we can definitely do. That's, that's pretty adventurous. That's something we haven't done. So I, I'm already fulfilling my criteria. Like, I love it. You know, I, I initially thought in this conversation, I was like, man, I, I don't have as much adventure as I'd like. And it's like, you know what, Chris? Stop being so damn hard on yourself. You travel a lot. You go somewhere like every month, go to, you know, drive in, road trips, you go out to nature, you experience new things, meet new people all the time. Like, give yourself some credit. So, fun and adventure. Make sure that you're being kind with yourself and generous with yourself. You give yourself a one, you know, like, look at that. Are you are you really a level one in adventure? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Uh, I didn't give myself a one, but just to be, just as an example. So, for me, we're going to be going rollerblading and going out to nature, and I'm sure we'll have some some fun new nature experiences as well, but rollerblading will be cool, and I'm wondering if there's anything else that we can do. Maybe, uh, I wonder if there's a garden that we can go to in Las Vegas. I wonder if there's any gardens. I think the weather is turning nice. The, it might not be nice enough yet, but if the woman of my dreams is listening to this at some point and she hears this particular portion of the video, um, you know, we, we can definitely look at some gardens this weekend or a future weekend, whatever works best. So Petty says butterfly garden, spring preserve. That, that could, could be a fun place. I'll have to make sure I uh, give that suggestion and recommendation to the woman in my dreams. Make sure she gets that. So what is the adventure and the play and the fun that you are going to be taking on? Sharon says, I feel the beach and walk. Good. I love it. I love it, Sharon. I'm going to always love to level things up, okay? That's perfect. That's That's amazing. If that's a step forward for you, own it, do it, get it. And what would take that to the next level? Maybe building some sand castles. Maybe beach and walk. What what else could you do on the beach? Maybe ride a bike at the beach. Maybe ride a scooter at the beach. Maybe um maybe dance on the beach. Maybe um paint on the beach. Maybe cross stitch on the beach. I don't know. Whatever that is for you. Um I want to I want to invite you to a little bit more. Nature is great. And what can you do in nature as well? Now, there's no wrong answer if beach and walk is your paradise and adventure. Own it, girl. Get it. I'm proud of you. Thank you for letting us know that your next step is is the beach and walk. And what would make it even more fun? Maybe it's singing, singing on the beach, singing with your kids, teaching them to be self-expressed. Could be. Maybe. Maybe not. Collecting shells, paddle. Yes. Love it. Love it, Sharon. Good. And with those shells, make something. Because <laughs> collecting shells is cool. You can put them into a, a vase and that that's uber cool. You can also make something. You can make a pattern. You can make a necklace, all kinds of cool stuff. McKenna, what is up? Welcome, welcome. So we are diving in to some awesome conversation about fun and adventure. First, we made sure we rated ourselves. Where are we with our fun? Where are we with our adventure? And we created some ideas on how to expand that, how to be even more fun and adventurous. And going back to the fun, you know, fun and adventure go hand in hand a lot. Um, fun could be in the mo in the moment, not so much an adventure. It could be just dancing in the moment. It could be smiling. It could be singing. It could be painting. You know, paint in your house. Grab grab a sharpie. Draw. Maybe it's just draw. Draw a little bit more. Yeah. Sharon says having a cocktail. I love it. Petia said margaritas too. Jeez. What about me? I can't drink this year. Better word. It's not I can't. It's I am empowered in my sobriety <laughs> for this year. It's to to be sober, just in case y'all didn't know. December 12th, 
12, 12, 2018, I decided for the entire of 2019, I would be sober and, um, you know, just keep my, my system pure, cleanse and purify my system. So I'm super grateful to be doing that. It is a lot of fun, definitely. So getting back to the conversation, what can you do to increase and reinvigorate your fun and your adventure? Because honestly, if you want to create the biggest legacy, the biggest impact, be the most most fulfilled, the most legendary epic human being that you can be. <laughs> Petia says, now I drink for both of us. Gee, I wonder who the woman of my dreams is, Petia. <laughs> These subtle hints aren't so subtle anymore. <laughs> and we're having a lot of fun, definitely. So. Becca said, oh, hey, going one year with no drinking, too. Good job, girl. Mm. Let's, I'll, I'll drink some Upload Rainforest Infusions with red tea and guarana to that. I'll, I'll drink to that. I'll drink some non-alcoholic drink. Girl, you on fire. Love it. Love it, Becca. Congrats. That's awesome. That's super cool. So back to the combo. Um, to be able to really experience the fullness of life, it, it's uncertainty. Tony Robbins talks about the six human needs and probably could have mentioned this early in the conversation. It's all good. Uncertainty is one of the core human values. There's uncertainty or variety. There's certainty and security. Those are two. Certainty and security, number one. Uncertainty and variety, number two. There's love and connection. There is um, contribution. There is growth. I said love, connection, contribution, growth. There's one more. It'll come to me. Anyways, so the big one that fun and adventure is fulfilling is uncertainty. A, a need for uncertainty, for variety, for spicing life up. Because it wasn't meant to be this monotonous journey, this monotonous straight line. It was meant to be a fun, exciting, exhilarating opportunity. And wherever you're at, whether you're jumping off of, you know, 10 story buildings or hundred story buildings and skydiving, or if you're driving formula one race cars, or if you're walking on the beach and that is your adventure, that is your fun. That is your play. It doesn't matter. Don't be attached. Don't compare. I always like to level things up and just really trust yourself that you can do something this week to amplify your adventure and your fun. And it will in turn affect every area of your life. When you go adventure into a new music, uh, a new, uh, yeah, new style of music, listening to a style of music or playing a new instrument, that's an adventure. That's fun. That's play. It causes you to expand. It causes you to form new neural pathways activate parts of your brain that you didn't activate before. So literally you're changing the chemistry of your brain, and your body in a good way. As long as you're not frustrated and beating yourself up and attached to how things look, because fun and adventure is about being unattached. It's about play. It's about letting go of expectations. It's about dancing and flowing with what is and just making the most out of it and seeing the bright side, being curious, being curiously engaged, experiencing the wonder of life. So that's what you have the opportunity to experience and give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to take that next step, whatever it is. If there's something that you've been meaning to do for a long time, maybe you go take a, a karate or martial arts class. Maybe it's to go paint, to go throw clay. Maybe it's to even adventure and fun could be to create a certain type of content online, to create a you know kitchen corner and you make food or whatever that is. Have fun. I know for me, a, a fun and adventure is like writing songs. I was, I have a desire to be a musician and a singer and a performer in bigger ways. And right now my focus is burned up coaching, becoming your greatest possible self, being an awesome coach and speaker. And in time, I know I'll be able to expand out to those things. But what's to stop me when I have some free time, when I am able to channel my passion and enjoy myself now, what's to stop me from creating some lyrics, from practicing, from being the performer, the successful musician now? What's to stop me from inventing 
things now. Designing, drawing, dreaming, creating plans, marketing plans to sell things. I'm so grateful for my life path. I went through electrical engineering, got my degree. Sharon said to bake and cook and love this and don't do this so much. Yeah, so Sharon, you're going to do it even more. Put it in your schedule. By the way, anything I've talked about, if you want to do it and you haven't yet scheduled it, you haven't yet written it down, you haven't yet cemented it, put it in your schedule right now. Like literally stop this podcast, literally jump off the live stream, put it in your calendar. I'll be here when you get back. We'll be in virtually the same topic. It's all good. <laughs> so it's super important that you actually commit to it. You tell someone about it, you put it in your calendar, you make it real. And I was talking about something right before this. So make it real. <sighs> talking about six human needs, uncertainty, variety, adventure. Oh, inventing. So, so, so. I was talking about inventing things. I was talking about like how. I can start doing these fun and adventure now. I don't have to wait till I have everything lined up. I can start doing these fun, playful things right now and just express myself. Oh, I was saying another thing. It was totally a tangent, but I wanted to talk about it because it's awesome. I'm so grateful for my life path because I became an electrical engineer. I um, got this really process system oriented and driven mindset. And then I evolved into entrepreneurship saying, hey, the structure is great. The nine to five is great. The high pay is great. The science and the technical stuff is great. And I need more flow. I need more freedom. I need more joy and fun in my life. And so I said, I'm going to do what I want when I want. And then started on my entrepreneurial journey and then recognized at some point in that, in that I was like, oh, I need some more structure in my life. So it's like the pendulum swinging back and forth. I invite you to swing a little too far with the adventure, with the fun. I don't I don't think I've ever heard of anyone who regretted traveling around the world even if it was expensive even if it racked up debt they would they would trade the the money for the experience and be in debt anytime obviously don't do that if you don't have to be travel and make money if if possible you know don't don't have it be a a debt but rather how can you make it an asset how can you write it off how can you do all these things but it's super important. Like I love my life journey because it's unfolding perfectly to be able to communicate with people wherever they're at, you know, especially the the world changers who I resonate with, the people who are committed to elevating consciousness, awakening people on the planet, coming alive, helping others come alive. It's just what an opportunity I've been given. And I'm super grateful for my ability to contribute to mankind and f have fun and play and dance. Just dance in this life, this life of creation, this life of fun and adventure. Have the impact, have the legacy, create the legacy. I see Thomas out there. This dude's all about legacy. He was on the show a couple weeks back, just brought the heat, shared so much wisdom. I think Sharon was on there too. Um, it was amazing. You know, it was amazing. And the legacy and the fun and the, aspect of having both sides of life, both joys, both experiences, the seriousness, the ambition, the, the legacy building, the work, love the work, love the contribution, love the ability to impact and love your ability to enjoy, to have fun, to be fulfilled, to experience that freedom, experience that fun. You deserve it. You deserve the very best. You deserve a life by design. I just wrote an affirmation on my on one of the, my journals that I have, multiple different journals. One of them, I wrote, it's okay for me to have everything I want. Like how awesome of an affirmation is that? It's okay for me to have everything I want. It's okay for me to have everything I want. Imagine if you told yourself that. In fact, do it right now. I'm going to say it, and then you say it. It's okay for me to have everything that I want. Let's do it again. It's okay for me to have everything that I want.
<sighs> Let that sink in. Let that energy sink in. It's okay for me to have everything I want. It's okay for you. It's okay for us to have everything we want. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not going to spoil ourselves. We're not going to become bad human beings. We're not going to ruin ourselves. I know I, I had that ideal for so long that if I had everything I want, I would be miserable. I wouldn't want anything else. If I had everything I want, I, I would let it get to my head. I would become power hungry, yada, yada, yada. It's okay for me and you to have everything we want and more. Because you know what? There's constantly new rockets of desire being launched all the time. Like rockets of freaking desire. Like, I want that. I want that. That inspires me. I'm creating that. And fortunately, we got this like 3D dense reality that it takes a long, can, it can take a long ass time for our thoughts to manifest. Like imagine if we lived in a, in a world where as fast as we think, things happen. Like there would be such terrible consequences. Like I think that I'm going to crash, you know, and you crash. <laughs> We'd be screwed. No one could ever have a bad thought. But thankfully, we have the power to act on our thoughts and the power to focus and invest our thoughts into outcomes and results and things that we desire. Unfortunately, we weren't taught that growing up. We weren't taught how to use our thoughts. We weren't taught how to manifest. We weren't taught how to use the laws of the universe to get everything that we want and have anything that we want, unfortunately. But hey, our spirits, at least this is what I believe, our spirits, you know, our source, God put us into this uh, position, into this body, into this experience, and we knew what we were getting into before we were born. And we chose this reality. We chose these circumstances for whatever reason. So chose to be in a, uh, inducted into a society that didn't teach us how to use these powers. But hey, we learned, didn't we? Wherever we're at, whether we're five, whether we're 50, doesn't matter. We learn, and now it's about mastering those distinctions, mastering those superpowers that we have. I love this. I love talking. I love communicating. I love inspiring. I love, I love being my greatest possible self. I love being the leader of a movement. And it wouldn't be possible unless... I enjoyed who I was also being off camera. So that's another thing. If you show up really great with your clients and passionate and positive and all these things and behind the scenes, you're like freaking miserable. You can't carry on that facade for long. Like it doesn't work. Like I, I, I tried, I attempted that years ago, like thinking I'm just going to work really hard. And that's what people want. They want me to work really hard. They want me to be a, someone who busts my ass every day and has accomplished so much. It's like, well, Yes and no. <laughs> That's not the whole picture. People want a magical life. People want to be, do, and have anything they desire. They want to be inspired by people who are real. They want to be inspired by people who work hard, who've overcome some incredible difficulties and obstacles, and also are using their time and their energy for good. So be that person. Be the person who plays. Be the person who has fun, who adventures, who creates your freaking reality. And of course, master your purpose. Master your ability to be present. Ignite that presence within you. Your purpose. Get Figure out what your life is for. If you, are, if you don't know what that is, you're not going to be able to have fun because, I mean, you could, but it's only a fraction of the fun because you'll feel like you're more concerned about figuring out who you are and getting that clarity you can only have fun and adventure for so long without really being a huge contribution to people, in my opinion. Some people might say they can play for their entire lives and just be playing and not be like serious about what they're actually doing, the results and the impact that they're creating in the world. And I'm someone who believes that it, it's in total moderation. And I have had a challenge because I, I spent a lot of my time just working my butt off. I spent a lot of time just playing my butt off, and I wasn't fulfilled with either of those. So I found the middle road or some kind of balance between the two, some kind of ratio, to be the most fulfilling for me. So um, play and adventure, yes, and when you know your purpose, who you are, what you value, you can thoroughly enjoy that play and that fun and that adventure. If you don't know, you'll, you might feel guilty because you 
aren't crystal clear on who you are and what you stand for. And there'll be that, that gnawing feeling that you're meant for something more and you're meant to be impacting people. You're meant to be sharing your message and igniting people with your gifts and abilities and service. Are you really doing your best? Can I grow more? Growth. Growth isn't always fun and adventurous, but it, it really brings a fulfilling life. So that purpose, that presence, really being here and now, fun and adventure, man, that's presence. That's like being in the moment. That's truly just coming alive, being electrified because of who you are in that moment and, and the sensations and the experiences and all that good stuff. And it also can take work with the habits, you know, being present takes a discipline, it takes a discipline to be here and now versus somewhere else. And you do that through creating a, a structure, some kind of structure of your life to show up and perform presence be present wherever you are don't be distracted don't have split energy be present be 100 percent in the moment wherever you are and the last part is the platform fun and adventure great and related to purpose are you really maximizing your voice and your talents and your gifts are you really creating a platform where you're leaving a legacy and impacting the world for me and the people that i surround myself with and our clients that is fucking essential Essential to have a platform, essential to have a voice, essential to, to make a stand in a very public way of who you are and what you're committed to and what the world will be like because of your presence, because of your gifts, because of your mission, your vision, your purpose, your calling. What is that? The dream. The I have a dream speech. Martin Luther King, like he had a freaking dream. That was his, the platform was speaking in public and sharing that message, which was a part of his purpose. But it really starts with step number one, deciding who you are, embodying that, and then getting that message out in a big way. So if you want support with that, send me a message, chris at beyourgps.com. If you want to ignite your fun and your adventure even more, let's do it to it, peeps. We'll have a blast, and it'll be the best time ever. We do it through one-on-one -on -one coaching, through masterminds, and lots of other cool forms. So if you want to find out more, send me a message, chris at beyourgps.com. Looking forward to talking to you, how to ignite and really master your purpose, your presence, and your platform. Let's go, baby.